So hello everyone. Welcome to this another video of Scale Up India. I'm Abhishek Verma and you are watching the Hibernate series. Now in this video we are going to discuss about our new strategy in order to generate the primary key with Hibernate. And in the previous video also we have discussed about one particular strategy. We also discussed what were the advantages and disadvantages and also if you remember it is it was generating one extra table also. Now if you have watched that video then you can tell me in the comment section what was the name of that table which was generated extra in the previous video. But in this video we are not going to generate uh, that again. So let's directly start with the code and see what is going to be a second strategy in order to generate the primary key. So let's again directly switch towards our coding part. So again we are in our IDE and here this is our demo 4. So it looks something like this and the code is exactly same like the previous one. So for this, as you can see in our owner, we are having this at the rate generated value, same as the last time. We have removed the set ID method, same as the last time. In the input util, we are taking these default values, same as the last time. Because again, here also we are trying to add multiple owners and we don't want to waste our time in always providing the data. Now one thing which I have done is that from the repository part, I have removed those sysout statement because already you have seen that the owner is going to provide you the ID after this line and how that happens that we will see with the help of hibernate context or persistent context in our future videos but not now. So there is no change in the repository and only change in this and before uploading it to the github I'll remove all this default part. Now let's see what other changes we need to do in this owner. Now for this owner you know that if I will use it directly then it is going to use a strategy and that is going to be this auto. Now this auto since we are making usage of the MySQL so it is going to be table strategy. Yeah. If you are going to use some different kind of database then it can be a sequence also but it is going to be either one of them. But in this video instead of the table or the sequence or auto let's try to go by the identity strategy. So it says that indicates the persistence provider must assign primary keys for the entity using a database identity column. So here it says that from the database only it will take some identity column and accordingly it is going to assign you the value. So let's see how it is going to do this. Now for this first of all we need to remember this particular argument name so that is strategy. So let's take it here. So in the brackets let's give strategy. So this is the way you always need to see which annotation is going to take which particular parameter. Now after this we need to take the type. So for this what I'll do is I'll just copy this like I'm just being a little lazy in order to write it from the scratch. So I'll just do this and for this let's see the options. So if you wish you can again explicitly say auto identity sequence table UUID or whatever you wish. But you know that for auto we don't need to say explicitly because it is by default. That's why in the previous video I didn't root. But for this I'll go for identity so let me just choose it. So here it says this is going to be my identity. And rest everything is same in this video as compared to the previous one. So that's a small change I have done here. And beside this let me show you in my database. So again I have cleared my database completely only the schema is there because it is not going to be generated by default. Let's run the code and see how it is going to behave. So I'm in the demo and here we are. So I have started it and let's see what it is going to do. So this time it just generated the owner table. Then this is id integer not null as always because the moment you say at the rate id it is going to become a primary key integer because of this and since it is primary key it is going to be not null and this is the new thing which got added here. So this time here itself it said auto underscore increment which means here itself it is saying it is going to be an auto incremented column and since it is saying here only there is no need of another table. So that is the advantage of going with the identity strategy. You don't need to go for a new table here. Let's see in the database also. So let me just refresh here. So you see only one table is there. There is no SEQ table. 
and this is the one here it looks as it is same but if I'll click here so here also it says AI where this AI doesn't means artificial intelligence this AI simply means auto increment so this we have provided here now if this is the case let's try to add the owner so I'll just say one here and again all the values are there so let me just say something like this and this email is again one ID is one so that is for the pet for us to remember so it says everything is done it is not printing because we have removed those is out statements and let's go here to our database and see what is the value so in the database let's refresh this and you can see the value is one so it's simple and there is no other table so there is no confusion as such the things are going to be pretty simple here now let's add one more thing so let's again say why let's again add let's say this time 900 900 9002 and let's say email as 2 let's say id as 2 and let's check it again so again we go here we refresh id is 2 simple now last time we saw that after this when we stopped our application and then we restarted our application then it didn't give us id as 3 it gave us id as 52 because there it was taking as a block of 50 so every time we are going to restart our application it was taking a block of 50 so let's see what it is going to do so let's add again let's say 900 the email is going to be email 3 id is going to be 3 let's see what is the value what do you think so here if I refresh ID is 3 so there is no confusion this time so ID is still 3 so it doesn't matter how many number of times you are going to stop the application how many number of times you are going to restart the application it will always keep on going in the sequence way now let's do something more different again and this time let's delete the one so let's say this and let's delete so see obviously one thing is simple if I delete ID 2 then obviously the next is going to be 4 because there is no issue with the previous one if I delete 1 or 2 then there is no confusion what is going to be the next one obviously it is going to be 4 what if if I delete 3 then the next one will be 4 or 3 again let's see so first let me delete then let me say which ID to be deleted so let's delete 3 so it says owner has been deleted successfully let's verify from here yeah that has been deleted now the question is what is going to be the next ID 4 because as per the sequence it should be 4 or is it should be 3 let's see so let's run this again and here we will say ID as 1 and let's save here so for us it is going to be 4 hence I'm making it as 4 then email is 4 and then pet ID is 4 so it has assigned something now here if we go the ID is still 4 so here there is no confusion because 3 was already assigned and you deleted it hence it is giving you 4 so that is the point because if it will give you 3 then there are chances of mistake because let's say that you have 100 owners the 100th owner deleted himself or wanted to remove himself from your code himself or herself and then the new owner came that also will get the previous ID so there is going to be a confusion in that way hence the good option is always to have a new ID and that's the way it is going to work so that's the thing now some of you may say that okay it must have remembered because you were running the code continuously what if if we delete again so let me just delete this ID again as 4 which ID as 4 so this ID we have deleted and for this let's see what it is going to do so it has deleted 4 there now since we have deleted 4 now let's stop the application so now there is no chance that it is going to remember that last time 4 was assigned and now 5 needs to be assigned if we will directly look into the database or if we will ask someone to look into our database anyone will say that okay the next ID is going to be 3 
but we know that we already added three four then we deleted them so let's see what it is going to be do what do you think what should be the next one I feel the next one should be five I mean logically and if I want to make everything correct then it should be five if everything goes wrong then it can be three or four but then it won't be good for me and then I need to think for some different strategy let's run this again let's see what is going to be the stuff and let's add it here again so it should be five for me as I remember so five and here also let me say five and it should be five so let's see what it will do and yeah this is five so that's the magic so even if you stop your application even if you delete the last row in the continuous way or even if you delete and then you restart the application it doesn't matters it will always take the new ID why because this time it doesn't needs to read from some different table or from somewhere else it doesn't depends on your hibernate it will directly depend on this auto incremented so directly on this column itself we have provided the auto increment thing here and hence there is no issue this time and that's the why always it is going to take a next ID whatever things you are going to do and hence this is one of the most commonly used strategy in most of the application which we call as identity because by default it is going to assign you the number and that's going to be easy and a good practice also now you might be wondering that still how does this magic happens somewhere it must be storing that information that next should be six like currently it is very simple five is there so the next one will be six but if I delete five then also how will it remember that the next one is six so for this what we need to go is every magic this time is now in your this owner table only not with your hibernate basically so we will go here on this particular thing yeah we can call it as a spanner icon I hope it is clearly visible to you not sure so you can try to zoom in and pause the video now here you can see everything regarding your table so here you can check that your ID is a primary key and it is not null in nature and it is auto increment so everything you can check here all other values are mostly not null in nature email is unique phone number is unique and yeah these are the things then we are not doing anything with indexes much here foreign here rigors partitioning and there is this options also now here if you see here it says there are some general options and this is the magic where it is going to save the information so here it says that the next value is going to be six so because of it it remembers what is going to be the next value so if you are going to alter the value here like if you will manipulate the things here so let's say instead of 6 you call it as 60 now let's see what it is going to do so we have applied so we have directly changed this value to 60 yeah and let's save it now let's go here and our code is already running so let's see what it will do will it be 6 or 60 let's see so let's save it again save this and for us it is going to be 6 now obviously you are not going to do something like this crazy yeah? I mean then it's wrong you are cheating so let's check here and for this if I go so it will provide me idea 60 because this time the only source of information was this particular value whatever was available here and we need to just refresh this again so that it shows you the next so now it is showing 61 so this was the only source of information for it from where it can remember now since you altered this value itself and hence it got confused because now there is no other way now you will say that okay then it is not good but see in the real world application there is some application which is running on production what are the chances that you will directly get access to that database and you will be able to change uh, this value like this in the production the chances are like negligible 
until unless you are a very top level official you are a some manager level person you won't get that much amount of access your each and every operation will be tracked whatever you are doing here so the chances are less that you can alter some information like this but still someone can still do it can be a manager it can be any higher official they can try to alter this value and what if if we make this value something as 2 again then if we will try to add here so it will try to assign the value as 2 then it will say that 2 is already there and this way you can corrupt the whole database in a single go because every time whenever the code will try to assign it will try to assign as 2 because of this particular value 2 is always there so that means that you won't be able to add any kind of owner so for this also there is an option and we can go for a one more different strategy but that we will see in our next video i have just told you all the loopholes but the point is that doing something like this is going to be very rare i mean believe me if i'm a developer working for a company i will never do something like this because then there are chances they are going to fire me obviously i mean they should fire me if i will do something like this yeah and in the current scenario i don't think so that you want yourself to be fired just because of this silly thing although whenever you are learning then you can do something like this n number of times and see how the things are going to behave so as of now just like the video try the demo give me a comment in the comment section and tell me whether you are going to do something crazy like this and share it with your friends and tell them not to do anything uh, like this and then just subscribe our channel also so that we can increase our subscriber increase our community and in the next video we will see one more strategy how to resolve this issue and what can be the different options here yeah thanks everyone